Hey everybody, thanks for joining us here again at T-Roy Cooks. I really appreciate it. This is where I answer your questions live straight talking to you. So if you asked a question, hopefully I'll get it on this list here for you. If not, then probably next week. Um, I'm still getting plenty of questions. Y'all keep them coming. If you have any questions about the uh, stuff that I may mention in this video, the YouTubers, the products, uh, stuff like that, or if you need more about my social media and stuff, just click show more down beneath the video. And that'll open up the description box and there's a lot of good information in there including the questions that I'm going to answer and we're at in the video that those questions are answered so hope that helps everybody out there <clears throat> um, it takes a little while to get that done but looking out for you folks I appreciate it and uh, thanks again for all the questions y'all keep them coming if you have questions after watching this one just ask them in the comments down below let's get to it Martin Flores hi Troy what are your thoughts on a drum smoker was also thinking about buying a beginner's stick burner. What are your thoughts on Oklahoma Joes and old country smokers? I'd greatly appreciate your advice. Thanks, bro. Uh, Martin, um, again, I've mentioned this before. I haven't tried a drum smoker. Uh, it's probably the cheapest smoker that you're going to find. But uh, I haven't cooked on one, so I really can't give you an honest opinion on cooking on them. And what I've mentioned before is what I've seen. The... Uh, the, the the ones that I've seen, it looks like it's hotter in the bottom where the coals are, where the fire is, and that tends to heat up the meat quicker on the bottom, especially if you're hanging a rack of ribs or something from it, because the food usually hangs from the top and, you know, dangles down. Um, but for long cuts, like ribs, you know, hanging down there low, it looks like it would, it would cook them more done on the bottom than on the top where they're hanging from. Now, if you're doing poultry and stuff like that, I, I would think that that would work fantastic. Uh, as far as the, uh, the Oklahoma Joes and old country smokers and stuff like that, the offset offset uh, smokers or stick burners, <coughs> uh, those those I would prefer over the drum smoker myself. Uh, there is a lot more work because you have to tend to the fire and keep that proper airflow going through it and stuff. So it's it's a lot more work, but in my opinion, it produces a lot better product. Now I've seen some of the Oklahoma Joes and they're okay. A lot of them you have to modify to get them work right. I will say that the old country uh, smokers, though, my brother Sean, Moonshine's Roadhouse, he has one of those old country Picos, I believe it is the one he's got. And, um, in fact, uh, Tom over Tom's Test Kitchen had one for a little while, I believe. But uh, they're well built. Uh, they seem to work fine. I've cooked on my brother's before, and, and I enjoyed cooking on it. It's, uh, it's not quite the build quality that my uh, my Yoder <clears throat> my Yoder smokers Wichita is but they're really they're really well built and uh, if it were me I'd go with the uh, the old country Greg Harriman what attachments do you have for your KitchenAid I'd like to try one of the pasta makers and maybe the sausage maker Christmas is coming and our kitchen needs some new toys that's what I'm talking about Greg can't never have too many toys man <clears throat> Lucy <laughs> Lucy get down girl oh 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 yeah, oh yeah. Give me some sugar. Oh, Lucy, Lucy, Lucy. Oh, there you go. <clears throat> nope, y'all be good. Let me turn that around. What? But I can't jump on the table anymore. She mooned y'all that one time in the beginning, uh, one of my first episodes, and that wasn't a pretty sight. But anyway, uh, Greg, let's see. Uh, attachments for the KitchenAid. That's right. <clears throat> uh, we do have the pasta maker and also the the grinder, sausage stuffer type. Thing and they, they both work wonderful. Uh, the jeez, the uh, no, <laughs> hang on. The uh, the pasta maker that we have it has three different uh, three different uh, metal cutters on it. One's for fettuccine and uh, regular spaghetti, and I forget what the third one is. It's uh, I, I forget, but anyway, it works great. But the recipe that came with the attachment we tried and it doesn't make good pasta so uh, you have to use your own recipe would be my advice on that one Lucy go go on girl and uh, y'all wanna see Fifi come here Fifi there's Fifi oh there's Fifi there you go okay yeah. say hey say hey everybody hey everybody <laughs> my dogs are always around me man no no Fifi no Lucy get down get down go on girl go on I'm trying to make a video what do you think you are Marilyn Monroe or something huh Huh? What you doing? Come on. Come on, girl. Oh, hang on. Hang on, Greg. I'm getting to you, man. Hang on. Oh, oh. 
Come on, get in, get in, get in. Hang on, y'all. Let me move this chair that, that, that way they can't jump on the table. There we go. <sighs> Sorry about that. Yeah, I love my dogs, but man, they sure do like a lot of attention. And I give them a lot of attention off camera. Where were we? Greg, attachments. Um, yeah, the pasta attachment is fantastic. I would, I would recommend that. Just again, use your own recipe. In fact, we found that using the, the double lot flour from, uh, from Italy works really nice. Um, the sausage stuffer and uh, the meat grinder and stuff, it's okay. Um, it's not going to give you, I mean, it, it'll work if you're just trying to, to, to do a little bit, like a pound or two. It'll work. It's really slow to grind the meat and to stuff the sausage and stuff. Uh, so that, that would be the only downside I can see of that. It does work, but for small batches. Never can have too many toys, though. Ain't that right? Barbecue culture. Hey, Roy. It's Troy. But that's cool. I got you, man. How are you? Doing fantastic. Hope you're doing great, too. <laughs> What's your favorite dish you've never done by yourself? Oh, man. Favorite dish I've never done by myself. Hmm. Need some thinking music on this one. Favorite dish I've never done by myself. I don't think there is one. I really can't remember any. Hmm. Hmm. I really don't know. That's a good question. I have to give that some thought. If I can think of something, I will uh, try to flash it at the bottom of the screen for you. But I really, I don't think I have any. Um, William, a blank. I just enjoy your videos so much, Troy. You're the man. You make them interesting, and you have that deep, bear-like voice. Keep it up. There you go. <clears throat> Say, do you ever cook in competitions? By looking at the products you put out, you really should. No, William, I don't. Uh, I just... With competitions, you're, you're on a time schedule, a really tight time schedule to have all that meat done, prepped, and turned in. I'm not a high pressure kind of guy. I'm just laid back, take it easy. You know, I don't like all the high pressure stuff. But, uh, you know, if, if I have family or friends over, they do get to partake in some of that fine food y'all see me cooking. And I've had quite a few compliments, so I appreciate it. Appreciate the question, man. Scott P., love your channel. I have a question and a video suggestion. Hmm. Can you make a blooper reel? <laughs> I'm sure you've captured some pretty funny stuff. Scott, that's something that I really... If, if there's some good bloopers in a video, a lot of times I'll add them at the very end of the video, but I don't have a lot of bloopers. The, uh, my main hang up with making these videos, and it's, it's going to probably sound crazy to, to all of y'all that don't make videos, my opening scenes and the endings of my videos. Once I get past the opening, and I may take five or ten takes doing the opening, and maybe three to five doing the closing tasting the food but once I start cooking from there until I'm plated up what you see is unedited that's that's me just stopping the camera and starting to back up again when I'm ready to talk again but uh, that that's my biggest deal and the only, the only bloopers I really have is when Karen's in the background trying to mess me up but she's usually behind the camera y'all can't see it but uh, there was one there was one video where y'all could see her behind the camera because the back window was in the back door windows were behind me and you can see her reflection in those uh, windows and that was pretty funny but if I if I do have some bloopers I usually put them at the end of the video appreciate the question Jason Stillwell Christmas is coming up what are some barbecue gifts suggestions what are some barbecue gift suggestions for someone who loves barbecue equipment wise and our food wise thermometers barbecue sauces rubs or anything out of the ordinary yeah, um, man, I'll tell you what, I, I just, I love Oak Ridge barbecue uh, rubs, and I also like Texas barbecue rub, and I'll put their websites down in the description box. Again, hit the show more beneath the video to open up the description box and find all these great products. Uh, you need some, some good gloves, you know, I like, I like leather gloves, uh, or some of those gloves that, that have material like some of the, not, not asbestos, but some heat proof material with maybe some rubber grips in the fingertips that would be helpful um, some good tongs are nice 
barbecue sauces yeah I would you know if if it were me and I wanted to really give somebody a nice barbecue sauce I would give them some of the uh, El Rabbit's barbecue sauce especially the spicy man El Rabbit's barbecue yeah that's good stuff man and also the Tim Bucks Tim-Bucks.com I believe both of those are they're really close in flavor really really good but I like the spicy version of them also the uh, Texas pepper jelly all that rib candy stuff man that rib candy y'all see me glazing on my pork uh, my, my, my pork ribs and all that oh that stuff's good man really really good and don't it's got habanero flakes in it but don't let that scare you because it's so sweet it balances the heat so you I mean I'm, I can't handle the heat like I used to I wouldn't go out and buy a habanero pepper and bite into it I'm not gonna do that Serrano is uh, or, or jalapenos probably about my speed right now and man I tell you that Texas pepper jelly the rib candy that I use all the time just the regular not the two times or three times or whatever they have nowadays but just the regular habanero I like the habanero mango pepper jelly uh, rib candy but I've tried all of them they're all really really good and they even make it without the habaneras if you're interested so I, I would I would go that route as far as uh, thermometers yeah man they've got some great ones out there the, the Maverick ET 733 it's a wireless it's got a little handheld you can hold with you and leave the main base at the pit and the same thing with the new Thermoworks smoke it's uh, it's the same setup you've got the base sitting over there with the probes in the meat by your pit and you've got a little handheld device telling you what the temps are so you can walk away and do whatever you want to do and it's good for about 300 foot range site to site and I, I can tell you I can hook that thing up and be in the front of my house which is probably a good 50 60 feet and it works fine through the walls so hope that helps unless you want to buy somebody a, a barbecue pit <laughs> yoder yoders but also uh I, I mentioned yoder a lot but you know gator pits is also really good lang smokers they're really good but lang is reverse flow uh i've never cooked on a reverse flow but they're supposed to have really even temperatures across um jambo pits is good but a lot of these other ones, you know, you're gonna to have to wait for them to build the pit. One of the reasons I went with Yoder is because I had put the order in and I had the pit delivered within eight weeks, about seven weeks, I believe. So, and they delivered it, pretty cool. Anyway, hope that helps, Jason. Daniel Zamora, great chat, buddy. My question is, what is your opinion on reverse flow smokers? I, I was just talking about it. Have you cooked on one? Thanks, Troy, keep up the great job. I appreciate it, Daniel. I've never cooked on one. In fact, I've never actually seen one. But again, I hear that they work very well because your stack and firebox are both on the same end, meaning the the flow from the firebox, the heat is going under, under like a heat management type plate, and then back over. Once it hits the other end, it bounces back and goes over the meat and then out the stack. So that's why they call it a reverse flow. And I've never used one, never seen one in action but I hear they work very well. I may get one if I get another pit just to see what it cooks like, you know, but I hear they work very well. And I just mentioned Lang. I believe Lang is out of Georgia, I think. But uh, they make one of the better ones out there from what I've read and heard about. Rich Evans, another great video, Troy. I have a question for you on the next Thursday chat. Well, I appreciate that, Rich. And I'm sorry if you meant this for the previous chat. I think this question is a couple of weeks old, but we're doing it now. In your opinion, is the reverse sear method the best method for cooking a steak? Rich, that depends on how thick your steak is. If you get the regular, you know, half inch, three quarter inch, up to like an inch and a quarter inch thick steaks that you get from your local grocery, those are all best done seared. If you get a steak that's an inch and a half or inch and three quarter or thicker, then that's when I would switch to, to the reverse sear. And I love the reverse sear method. In fact, sometimes I don't even do the sear. I just do uh, cook off the heat indirect and just let it cook to the internal temp that I want. And then I'm good to go. The, uh, if, you, if you don't sear it at all, it stays tender. When you sear it, that outside, I mean, you get some nice, almost caramelized type flavors developing off of the, uh, the sear. I think they call it the Maillard reaction. But... Um, it, it also makes that very outer edge of the, the steak a little bit tougher. So I do reverse sear most of the time, but sometimes I don't even sear at all. I just cook indirect and be done with it. But I rarely, rarely 
eat any steaks that are less than inch and three quarter maybe inch and a half pushing it but inch and three quarter or thicker that's usually what I do great question great question let's see here Scott Mager uh, question for the next episode have you ever cooked something that after one bite you had to toss the rest out I have yeah I did that one time it was a recipe that uh, of Angie fit Angie on uh, Facebook and she's got a YouTube channel too but I don't think she posts videos very often but Angie out of Australia, she'd asked me to make a chicken, um, uh, what do you call it, a uh, chicken fritter. And I did. I tried the recipe out. And honestly, it would have been okay if I would just add some more seasoning to it. You know, it wasn't bad. But uh, the way that it was seasoned from the recipe, and I just followed the recipe. Man, whoever created that recipe does not know flavor. It was bland, really bland. But yeah, that happened one time. <laughs> Lee Burtis, uh, great videos, T. Roy. I have a question for you. How did your first brisket turn out, and what did you learn? A cheers from the UK. Hey, Lee, I appreciate that, man. Man, I remember it like it was yesterday. Cue the music. <laughs> I used to love when Dave Letterman do that. Uh, I, I do actually remember. I remember not cooking it long enough because I was impatient and I really wanted to eat it. It looked great. It smelled fantastic, but I didn't let it cook long enough. So it was a little bit tough. I learned just let the cooker, let the smoker do its thing. Give that, give that brisket plenty of time to get done. I usually cook mine from uh, to an internal temperature of about 198, and then I'll check for tenderness by sticking the probe in it. And at that point, I'm not really checking for internal temps. I'm checking to see with the probe how easy the probe goes into the meat. Excuse me, and it should go through like like uh, room temperature butter. If it doesn't, let it keep going. In fact, I've got a brisket video coming up here where I'll talk about that a little bit. And it may be two or three weeks down the line, but I've got a brisket. I'm doing two briskets and showing you the different bark uh, on, on each of them because I, I treated them a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. And I hope this noise behind me isn't hurting y'all's ears or anything. I've got some people, it sounds like they're cutting some uh, trees, tree limbs or something, trimming up trees. Yeah, I could use some wood. <laughs> Ah, uh, let's see. Gucci Pilot, your last comment gave me a question. Any chance you or Miss Karen would put out a video on making traditional pies like pumpkin, apple, key lime, or my favorite, pecan? Whew! I set my timer. Yeah, I got to go. I got five minutes to get on, get on a conference call, so this will be the last one. Uh, I have done a pecan pie. It was my Aunt Hildred's pecan pie recipe, and it's fabulous. My family's been eating it for years and years and years. Um, Karen makes a really good key lime pie, so I may get her to do that for you. I can do a, like a traditional apple pie, which I've been wanting to do, so I may do that for you. But if I can find that pecan video, I'll put it up here for you. Great, great. Uh, it's, it's old, man. My Aunt Hilda was born like in the late, eight, late 1800s or early 1900s. So we've been eating that pie recipe for a long time. Really good. From Louisiana. Good stuff. Yep. All right. Um, doggone it. I hate, to, I hate to cut this short, y'all, but uh, I got plenty more questions I can answer on the next one. I appreciate y'all sticking around. Y'all give me a thumbs up if y'all like this. I hope you share the video. And when you do, please tell all of your friends that T-Roy cooks responsibly. Until next time, everybody. Cheers. <laughs>